So guys, in this video I'm going to try and explain what hyperthreading is. You may have come across it a few times and not really understood what it's doing. Uh, for this we've got to look at a single CPU. Now in this diagram I've made we have kind of roads I think and we have a road coming in and a road going out. Uh, we have the CPU in the middle that has to deal with the traffic and then send it to where it needs to go. And in this example it's pretty straightforward to see that the cars come in, they get dealt with and then they go up to the road away. So this changed when we went into uh, multiple cores. So each core had its own road obviously but meant instead of being able to just deal with one car at a time we could technically deal with multiple cars each uh, with their own CPU. Um, however, this still had a bit of a problem because there are times where a CPU isn't busy. If you look at CPU 2, there isn't much traffic waiting in that road. So what hyperthreading does is add an extra road. In Windows we see this as a second core for each physical core. What this potentially allows us to do is to queue up more traffic. So when the CPU isn't busy, it can switch between lanes, try and remain as busy as possible. However, it's not always the case because there are times where the CPU has to wait for other things, um, the timing and such. But essentially what hyperthreading is, is to try and queue up as much traffic as it can and keep the CPU busy at all, all times. You won't see technically double the frame rate because the CPU can only deal with one thing at a time and also there are times where you may see a 50% usage of processor in Windows and think that only half your system is being used and what's happening there is that when whatever you're doing is filling up the first road with traffic and the second lane basically isn't being used so the CPU is just dealing with the one lane. Anyway guys that is what basically hyperthreading is and what it does.